Hey there, it's Karen, and I am here with Whiskey Sour. I, uh, a little tired, but, um, you know, I'm doing okay. So thank you very much for all your emails and your love. Your outpour of love is awesome. I uh, was looking at yesterday's video of the, where I had the tribute for my grandma. I was looking at my hair and my underneath my eyes and everything. It's just like, man. It's the, I usually don't really look that closely at the videos. I kind of fire them off to you not well, long after I do them. And, um, and I was looking going, geez, couldn't have just ran a brush through that hair. So today I just went for the hat. A lot of days I go for the hat or ponytail, but I was looking at underneath my eyes too and I was just like, that looks like hell. It reminded me of uh, Anchorman Will Ferrell where he's like, Audrey, look like hell. That's bush. That's bush league. <laughs> the circles under my eyes just kind of feel like that sometimes, but I, uh, I do sleep okay. There's just always a lot going on and you know you get a lot of late nights doing stuff or early mornings doing things or you just stare at a computer too long in a day or whatever. And so I'm glad you guys love me even with my bags under my eyes. <laughs> I uh, wrote a blog today called Do You See the Peripheral Pain? And uh, I was thinking about, you know, grandma dying this week and funerals and things like that. And I've been to so many. Um, as you guys know, I've lost many, many family members, grandparents, both parents, uh, cousins, just like tons, friends. I've uh, just been to a lot of funerals. Um, I never went to my father's funeral. And I was, uh, that was a decision that my mother had made and she apologized to me for most of my life. I'm not annoyed at that at all. It's just, I think she wanted to protect me in some way. I was the youngest of four and um, she was just, a brand new widow. He died in a plane crash and so this is the ultimate kung fu kick. We were talking about kung fu kicks in earlier blogs here, just how sometimes life just kind of sideswipes you. And that was probably uh, out of all the deaths that happened to my family, my father's plane crash was the ultimate kung fu kick because here he had um, children ranging from the age of 5 through to 12 four of them and a new widow who had never been to work, you know, so it was just, um, it, it was a kung fu kick initially and it ended up being a kung fu kick for my entire life and all of our lives in the family. Um, but she opted for me to stay home that day from the funeral and I was with a younger cousin and then one of our older cousins watched us while everybody was at the funeral. By not going to the funeral, I saw everything from a different angle. When you go to a funeral, everybody kind of gets channeled or funneled into the same um, the routine of that day. And so while everybody's grieving in their own way, you kind of are all going through the motions together. And so I felt like even as a little girl, I had a kind of different perspective on the funeral and just what was going on. My, uh, my home life, while we were children and would, you know, fight and have spats and stuff, we didn't have a, a sad house. Uh, I had a very great childhood. Things got bad for me more in the adolescent years, um, but my childhood was really quite exceptional. I had um, a really great uh, home, even after my dad died, but especially before, it was a pretty happy home. And I wasn't used to this congregation of sadness that was going on with people visiting the home. And uh, I, I remember a lot of people hugging and crying and saying sorry to each other or, uh, and it's, uh, or American sorry. <laughs> There's the Canadian coming out. Uh, a lot of that going on. And I had a very weird memory of a guy who was delivering all the wreaths and the flowers from the funeral to our home after. And he had a hook for a hand. And I remember having nightmares about that. Nobody was there to explain to me that he had no hand. It's just that was, I just thought that was really bizarre. And very surreal, you know, you see a truck backed up to your door and some guy with a hook for a hand, uh, and you're just, you know, almost six years old, uh, handing flowers, you know, by the hundreds. And I really mean by the hundreds. It was perfectly bizarre for every countertop and space and floor space in our home to be occupied by flowers. 
Uh, it's, we had tons of them in the garden, in the flower beds and stuff, but these kind of wreaths, almost like you'd see, I think people have been a little classier about their choice of flowers now too, because very tacky, I felt a lot of them were just really, a lot of them look like what you'd see at a cemetery or whatever. Lots of love obviously given with them, but you can just imagine as a little girl seeing all these wreaths and gladiolas, the, to this day, I, when I see gladiolas, I'm a little freaked out by them because there's so many in our home, just stacked in corners and just all over the place. Hundreds of them, really kind of creepy. Um, not too long ago, I was talking to one of my older cousins, and she recalls my father's funeral way back then, and she says she remembers my brother crying by a tree. And while everybody else is congregating inside, uh, I didn't know this until quite recently, um, he's out there uh, crying by himself. <laughs> this is the saddest thing you can imagine, right? This little boy who's, uh, he would have been seven, almost eight, uh, crying by a tree and my older cousin spotted this and she told me this quite recently and I thought that was really uh, it was amazing that her heart was big enough to notice something outside of the whole hub that was going on and it also showed me that quite often an apparent catastrophe is not necessarily the only crisis that's going on this has been happening to me this week uh, the obvious sadness is my grandmother's death and I've been feeling it from siblings and cousins and received lots of condolences and emails from you guys, thank you. Uh, but while this is going on, I'm seeing all these overshadowed pockets of sadness that are going on in my peripheral. And I talk a lot about the peripheral. It's not, uh, I, I actually talk about the peripheral as far as blocking out the peripheral when you're trying to be creative. But in this particular case, uh, the peripheral are all these little pockets of sadness and bizarre things that are going on while the big thing, my grandmother's death and funeral, is going on. Now, without talking about my family or my friends too much, because I, I just want to be clear that my family and friends have not opted in to my personal life. Uh, so there's, there's some things that um, I'm just very cautious of. I, naming names or talking about things, and you know, I talk about little pockets of my life all the way along the line, but uh, I'm very cautious when talking about them um, because they just they did not opt in my my kind of public world. But there's some other things happening which are of great concern to me. Um, there was a car accident. There was uh, an attempted suicide, and um, some other things outside this whole funeral situation, which has been catching my peripheral, much like my cousin spotting my brother crying into that tree. So. Uh, this happens a, a lot when there's a big thing going on and then there's all these other little things going on. So grandma lived a very long life, 92 years old, in her 93rd year. Uh, I am really super happy to have had such a fantastic lady at the top of our family. It's obviously sad but sometimes I feel like our energy needs to go where the immediate needs are. Sometimes the big news can distract us from all these um, these other pockets of pain that are going on from somewhere else. Spotting peripheral pain isn't something that I think everyone is capable of doing. Uh, some people just are, can only look at one thing at one time and can only handle one thing at one time. I think in my family, my mother was exceptional at it uh, and my grandmother was very exceptional at it as well. And certain women in our family especially could really spot everything that was going on and that's what made them really good mothers and grandmothers. Um, I'm definitely trying to keep an eye out for it a little bit more and be aware of it. It's kind of like if you're taking your family to a parade and one person in the family, quite often as a child too, uh, just that childhood innocence, will spot a homeless person outside the parade. Um, you know, you're there with your family having a great old time and, and then somebody spots them. and I'm glad there are people like my cousin who spotted my brother crying under that tree. You know, this is the finest part of compassion. My dad would have wanted people to comfort his children, and my grandmother would want us to be taking care of these peripheral problems and taking care of each other. That's part of her legacy being carried on, like I mentioned yesterday. I don't feel the need to go fix everyone, though. I 
I think this is a burden that has been lifted from me for quite a while now. I used to be very controlling in that I thought if I could just elbow my way in somehow, I could just fix everyone, and it turns out it's me who needs the fixing, and it's them who need my love and, and, and a good ear and listening. Being available to simply listen can make a world of difference to someone, so lots of phone calls <laughs> right now. Uh, it's going to be quite a long distance bill, <laughs> like, like I care. I don't do drugs, I don't drink, so I can spend my money on long distance if I want to. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a lot of phone calls. Maybe there's somebody out there who's been on your mind. Uh, maybe they could use a phone call. We shouldn't be waiting for someone to try to kill themselves to be available to them as a friend. We shouldn't wait until there is a funeral or a car accident to be there for them. Listening's really easy. Uh, it's just that it takes time. But you know what, we find time for movies and internet and TV, I'm sure. We can find some time to listen. So if there is somebody in your life specifically who's on your mind, sometimes they're on our mind for a bigger reason than what we know. And I think it's really good to reach out to them. If you feel strongly, that's like, you know, I wonder what Helen's doing today, or geez, I haven't heard from Bob for a while. I think I'll touch, touch base with him. Um, I think that's a good idea. I think we should be doing more of that. So uh, I'm feeling heavy, like I mentioned before, but I'm not overwhelmed. I am, I'm feeling like as life goes on, I feel a little more capable of taking it all in but I'm just trying to consistently remind myself that the people who have died before us really want us more than anything to carry on the tasks that they were doing if they feel good about them and if they were good things they were doing. Uh, for my father, my mother, and my grandparents, they, they really want us to be taking care of each other. That's a great concern to them. Any parent, really good parents or grandparents, it's a great concern that their children are taken care of so if we can make sure that the other children in the family and our friends around us are taken care of, that is a really great way to pay tribute to these people who have gone. Uh, I just wanted to share a quote with you today that, uh, from Vaclav Havel, who said, If we are to change our worldview, images have to change. The artist now has a very important job to do. He's not a little peripheral figure entertaining rich people. He's really needed. Something I've been preaching for a while. <laughs> I really agree with Vaclav. You are so needed. You know, if you are that artistic, compassionate, musical type, I really believe you are needed. And there is somebody, just someone in your world right now who needs you. So I really encourage you to reach out to them. All right. There's another sappy blog for you. <laughs> I'll cheer up, <laughs> but this is just what's going on with me at the time, so I'm sharing with you guys, okay? I will touch base with you again tomorrow. So, from Whiskey Sour and me, say rock on, Whiskey. Rock on. <laughs> that was a good one, right? <laughs> rock on, guys.